we're going to talk about the distinction between logical and truth functional truth table or tautological equivalents. So what you see on your left is uh, the Tarski's World program and I have written two sentences. Number one says A is to the left of B and number two says B is to the right of A. You can also see on uh, in Tarski's world I've built a world in which uh, it is true that A is to the left of B. Then on your right I've taken those uh, sentences and I have uh, put them in bool and I've uh, filled in the possible truth values for each of the sentences. So sentence one reads A is to the left of B. Sentence two reads B is to the right of A. And because there are two atomic sentences, there are four possible uh, truth value combinations. Row number one, both are true. Row number two, A is to the left of B is true, while B is to the right of A is false, and so forth. Now, um, when we're looking at these two sentences and we look at Tarski's world, we can see, because we understand the meanings of left of, right of, that uh, the two sentences say the same thing. So even though the left of relation is not identical to the right of relation in terms of what left of means and what right of means, when we have the uh, elements, the uh, constants A and B, as the uh, two logical subjects that bear the left of right of relationship, it turns out that the two sentences are equivalent. There's no way, uh, for example, to make these two sentences have different truth values. Uh, I can, um, in articulating or building a world, I can uh, make the sentences true at the same time I can make the sentences false at the same time, but I won't be able to generate a world uh, in which they are uh, they have contradictory values. Now, that makes perfectly good sense to us. It's a, a common way that we have of thinking uh, about uh, the sentences. But when it comes to the truth table, we run into something rather peculiar. Right? Notice that we don't have a connective. There's no negation, there's no conjunction, there's no disjunction. And so strictly speaking, we don't need to uh, generate truth values for each of the sentences to the right of the reference columns. Right? Because there's no value to determine. All we do is simply uh, duplicate the original atomic values for each. Um, what we notice is that the whether we generate these um, uh, duplicated values or not, but what we notice is that there are uh, two rows, that is two and three, where sentence one is true, sentence two is false, sentence one is false, sentence two is true respectively. Um, so we have contradictory values. So the truth table um, can't respect the logical equivalence of the two sentences precisely because the truth table's uh, function is to determine values of sentences that involve connectives. And where we don't have a connective, we simply uh, insert the value of the original atomic sentence. So we can see a distinction then between logical equivalence and truth table equivalence or tautological equivalence. Let's take a look at another example. Here's another example in which we have sentences that say the same thing logically, but that if we look at on a truth table, do not 
always say the same thing. So the sentence A is identical to B says the same thing as the sentence B is identical to A. And because they are logically equivalent, we won't be able to construct a world in which one sentence is true while the other is false. On the other hand, if we take a look at the truth table that reflects uh, the two atomic sentences, we find once again that there are two iterations where the sentences are uh, contradictory, right? So row two and row three uh, come out with uh, contradictory values. And I say come out even though we didn't actually do anything, right, to generate those values. We simply uh, copied over the referent columns, right? So um, the distinction that we want to understand then is between sentences that are logically equivalent to each other and sentences that are only uh, truth table equivalent or tautologically equivalent or truth functionally equivalent. So uh, the question then before us will be this, if we have sentences, so, so let me back out of that, uh, we know then that uh, not every logically equivalent sentence is a truth table equivalent sentence or is a tautologically uh, uh, equivalent sentence to another. Is it the case, however, that tautologically equivalent sentences or truth table equivalent sentences are all also logically equivalent? So the question that I'm asking is a question about uh, the scope of equivalence. Is it the case that the scope of tautologically equivalent sentences is contained within the scope of logically equivalent sentences? We know that, as a, just to reiterate, that uh, not all logically equivalent sentences are also tautologically equivalent sentences. So the, the scope, if you will, of uh, tautologically equivalent sentences is not large enough to contain logically equivalent sentences. And this is partly uh, a feature of the terminology we're using, but it is, uh, once we understand that terminology, um, a real question for us to ask. This question is similar to the question about necessity. So a truth table necessary sentence that is a tautology uh, is also going to be a logical necessity which is also going to be a Tarski's world necessity but the converse isn't uh, always the case. In other words, a sentence that is always true in Tarski's world is not a sentence that's necessarily going to be uh, true on every row of the truth table. That is, it's not a tautology. Okay, so I have here two atomic sentences, A and B, and I've already filled in the possible truth values for each. We'll talk more about uh, how you know what the layout is for those possible values uh, in another video, more specifically the video uh, in, that's called something like setting up or constructing a truth table. Um, but for right now I've, I've uh, go, gone ahead and set it up for us. And then we have two sentences. It's not the case that both A and B and then the second sentence A or B. Now very often we think that the sentence not both is equivalent to either one or the other. Right? So take for example uh, the sentence not both San Francisco and Los Angeles are in Southern California. We think that that is another way of saying one or the other is in Southern California. So we think that saying not both Los Angeles and San Francisco are in Southern California is equivalent to saying either Los Angeles or San Francisco is in Southern California. We'll see from the truth table, however, that sentence one and sentence two are not equivalent to each other. In other words, the conditions under which 
the sentence not both A and B and A or B respectively are such that the two sentences do not have the same truth values on every row of the truth table under the main connective. More specifically, under the negation in the column under the negation and in the column under the disjunction for sentence one and two respectively, the truth values are not identical in every row. So let's see how that plays out. The uh, main connective is the negation for sentence one. So first we determine the values for the conjunction. And we know that a conjunction is true when and only when each of the conjuncts is true. So the following values obtain. True, conjunction true is true. True, conjunction false is false. False, conjunction true is false and false conjunction false is false. We know that the negation's values are always the opposite of the sentence that the negation acts upon. So we have false, true, true, true. Now we move on to the connective under uh, sentence, or the connective for sentence number two. The disjunction is false when and only when each of the disjuncts is false. So the values are as follows. True disjunction true is true. True disjunction false is true. False dis disjunction true is true. And false disjunction false is false. Remember, as long as one of the disjuncts is true, the disjunction as a whole is true. So we really only need to know, for example, that A is true on rows 1 and 2 in order to know that the disjunction itself is true. So uh, now what we want to do is assess the sentences. In other words, we want to determine whether or not the two are tautologically equivalent. So for right now we're ignoring this uh, second evaluation uh, concept set. So in order for the sentences to be truth table equivalent, that is truth functionally equivalent, that is tautologically equivalent, they have to have the same values on every row of the truth table in the column under the main connective or in the case of uh, sentence two, the connective. Notice, however, that rows one and four have contradictory values. So the sentences are not tautologically equivalent. And when we verify our assessment, we're told that we're correct. Let's also take a look at a way we can think of the uh, disjunction as inclusive. That is by comparing it to the uh, exclusive notion of the disjunction. So recall that very often when we, in our ordinary ways of speaking, when we use a disjunction, we treat that disjunction as if it's exclusive. In other words, when we say something like, uh, you can have soup or salad, the uh, unstated um, assumption is that it's soup or salad, but not both. That's not how the disjunction works, however, in uh, logic. In other words, the disjunction is true when at least one of the disjuncts is true, and in fact, both could be true. So the sentence, you can have soup or salad, from the standpoint of truth functionality, is true when you have at least soup, but you could in fact have soup, and you could in fact have salad. So we have true, 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 false. That is the inclusive sense of the or. Sentence two shows us the exclusive sense of or. In other words, rather than simply uh, uh, making the implicit assumption that we agree we're talking about the, the exclusive or, in logic we actually assert it. So we say, uh, it's one or the other, and it's not both. 
the main connective is the conjunction, right? Boole alerts us to that. And then on the left side of the conjunction, we just have the disjunctions values to determine. On the right side of the conjunction, we first determine the value of the conjunction because the uh, connective inside the parenthetical is not going to be the main connective. Then the negation acts on the values uh, under the conjunction so that finally we can compare the negations values with the disjunctions values by way of the uh, requirements for the conjunction to get the value of the sentence as a whole, or sorry, the set of values for the sentence as a whole. So the disjunctions values are true, 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 false. Conjunctions values are true, false, false, false. The negations values are false, true, true, true. That leaves the conjunction to be determined, which we then compare with the values uh, for sentence number one. So the conjunction's values are false, true, true, false. We can see if we look under the uh, connectives, or sorry, look under the uh, conjunction connective, we see that the values there are not equivalent to the values under the disjunction. The values uh, on, on row one are not equivalent, right? Disjunction is true, conjunction is false. The fact that they're equivalent on the remaining three rows does not, if you will, make up for the fact that row number one has uh, non-equivalent values. So these sentences do not truth functionally say the same thing. And our assessment left over from the last uh, sentence we looked at uh, remains the same. We verify and we are told that in fact we are correct in our assessment. I hope this tutorial on logical and tautological equivalence is helpful to you as you study the logic of our language.